şu anda gayet güzel bir sohbet bizleri bekliyor. Biraz günlük ayaktan konuşacağız, biraz basketboldan konuşacağız derken artık konuşmama İngilizce devam etmek durumundayım. Welcome guys. How are you all here today? Thank you for question. Great. Good. How was the game? Five minutes ago. <laughs> Was it? Yeah. I mean, you were my partner. You should compliment me a little bit. Sure, sure. I, if I didn't have you, we would lose for sure. <laughs> I was surprising if you asked me about Monaco game, so I was quiet a little bit. But if you asked for this game, okay. it was a good it one. It was just this game. I saw him looking at me. You're like, oh my God, did you really ask me that question? <laughs> okay, how did the practice go? Because we are keeping you here right after the practice. So how was the practice? It was a good practice today. Um, after two days of... I think we came back with a lot of energy, so it was a good one today. Okay, today we're going to talk a little bit about your daily routines and then we're going to get to some basketball questions. All right. So that we all get to know you a little bit better, what do you do daily, what are your routines and everything. So I want to start with you, Asa. I'm the youngest one. Okay, <laughs> okay do you listen to any Turkish music, any Turkish singers? Yes. Who I are listen they? Tarkan. Tarkan. Yes. Which song? Uh, kiss Kiss. <laughs> oh, I know a couple of them, but he is, has some similar music that uh, we have in Serbia. So uh -huh. it's a similar, um, so it sounds similar to our music. So I like Turkish music. Is Mostly Bu Bu huh. Bura is playing some music or Suat when I have massage, but I have all other uh, singers I really don't know to repeat now. But I remember Tarkan. There is one so uh, song that I like, Seni Sev. Something like that. Seni Sev. That Tarkan sings? No, no, it's uh, like a duet. Uh, hmm. Seni Sevurim, Seni Sev. Yeah, but like, like who says that? Because they say that sentence in many of the. Yeah, I know, songs. but <laughs> I will, I will show you one time when I play. <laughs> I can find it in YouTube. Yeah, okay. It's my favorite. One. Who is your favorite singer in the in Serbia? Oof, I, have I mean, many. I know the Desna Level song. I forgot the guy's name. Zeko Yoksovic. Yes, there you go. Yeah. No, I have many of them. My my style of music is totally different than all of them. <laughs> it hurts a little bit for their ears, but I like that type of music. Okay. I have many of favorites, all traditional music. Okay, the next question comes to you. How is Istanbul treating you? What do you do here? Any uh, favorite places that you like to go? Uh, it's been great. Um, obviously, yeah, I became a citizen, so I have a, a different kind of love for the country. Uh, so it's been good. It's been treating me well. People have been really receptive, open. Uh, supported me since I got here. Um, in favorite places, I wouldn't necessarily say I have a specific place, but I like being by the seaside. Uh, on the Bosphorus, there's a bunch of restaurants and stuff like that, so um, I would say that's probably my favorite area to be, Bebek area, all around that area. I can imagine. Okay. For Babush, can I call you Babush? Like they do? Okay. You have to. <laughs> Otherwise, he doesn't know how to respond. <laughs> okay. What do you like to do in your off days? Great question. <laughs> uh, can I answer instead of him? Uh, I don't know. What I like to do or what do I do is two different questions. You can Sorry. answer both. You just create another. Because I love, I love to, I love to go to the movies, bowling. That's the thing that we like to do on my day off. Okay. That last time he did, 17 years ago. <laughs> but because I have two kids uh, at home, I just spend time with them and you know enjoy the family time. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's something very nice. I mean, I don't know why are they making fun of you when I ask the question. <laughs> but I don't know if you heard, but you, you said, well, last time he did the bowling was like 17 years ago. Yeah. First of all, we don't know his real age, that's why I said that. Second of all, <laughs> my suspicion is like that. <laughs> what sports do you like to watch? Sports? Uh -huh, other than basketball. I used to be a ski skier, so I follow skiing still, mm -hmm. like World Cup and stuff like that. But as everybody likes uh, soccer, I like to watch. But more and more, since we have so many games, I really don't watch any games. Especially not basketball anymore, because we have so many games and I'm tired a little bit of that. That's why I asked, like, what other sports? Okay. Um, this question, okay, goes to you. Things that made difference in your life? I mean, I would just say probably experiences from... I'm, I'm basketball, really changed my life it kind of has shaped my life into who I've become where I've been in the world uh, you know I never thought I'd be living in Turkey for four years five years ago I wouldn't believe that but I would say basketball has kind of shaped my life and created the certain experiences that have made me grow as a basketball player and as a man off the court um, so I would say basketball is probably the number one thing that has changed 
my life and kind of made it what it is. What was the most radical decision then? I would say my first year playing overseas um, in Basconia uh, was probably the biggest decision in my career that I had to make. Um, obviously, I grew up in America. I always played in America. I never had um, n much knowledge about the European game or what was available to me over here. So uh, when I first got to Basconia, it was a eye-opening experience, um, but it was, a, it was a good experience. It was a small city, small town. Uh, really let me focus on the game of basketball. And um, I would say my first couple of years in the, in the NBA, things didn't really go my way with injuries and playing time and stuff like that. So I would say Basconia helped me refine the love for basketball and really just enjoy playing the game again. And um, it was kind of what propelled me to, to be where I am now. Great. Then Bobos, this question is for you. Can you describe Coach Ataman with one word? Uh, Very interested in this any, answer. Can you help? <laughs> you guys should help him, maybe. So many words to describe him. <laughs> if I have to pick one, if I have to pick one, I will say passionate. Mm -hmm. He's really, you can see it uh, in a game. He's really into games. And that's the first word that came into my mind. I don't know if it's the best one, but I think it's a good one. Do you guys have any other <laughs> ideas? Yeah, you, now you're happy, aren't you? You asked me? You and then Larkin, I'm going to. Straight. Hmm? Straight. Straight? Yeah, he tried to attack sometimes, so he's kind of aggressive too. You? Any idea? He's confident. Mm -hmm. Confident. He's a confident guy. Confident. Okay, we got great answers. Now I'm going back to different questions. They're calling you <laughs> different names that you, you're familiar with. Uh, on social media, how they call you? Larking, they say, Shane Bright like a diamond. And then they have Sugar Shane. Which one is your fave? Probably Sugar Shane. Yeah. Probably my favorite one. I've been, my family's been calling me that since I was like eight years old. Mm -hmm. So that's probably my favorite one. Why don't you have social media, Bobosh? Yes. Why don't you have social media, Bobo? <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> he does? He's a finster. I don't, uh, why? I don't know. Uh, I used to have Facebook a long time ago and then I, one day I decided to try to stop to see if uh, I do better things with my free time and then I never went back to it. So maybe I should go back to it because I hear a lot of good uh, things about it, but maybe one day. I mean, I appreciate people who don't have social media because it's hard to not have one, you know? <laughs> you like that. But also, I feel like those people are kind of missing out too. I agree. I agree. Like I said, there was a, every time I hear the guys talking about stuff that they saw on social media, I had no idea it was going on. So it's a good thing to have it. I don't know, I don't know why I don't feel the need okay. that much, Makes but sense. maybe one day. Like Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, none. Because I can keep going, like, <laughs> keep yeah, going, like TikTok, la la. Yeah. Yeah, He's great for TikTok. TikTok. <laughs> I have a TikTok account, guys. You would have one follower. <laughs> <laughs> That's much easier to see. Uh, I have some questions for you. Jelic, the Puritaj, Srpski or English? Whatever you want. Whatever. But I am better in Srpski, uh, English. Okay, then. Is that good? It's good, right. you speak good. <laughs> Did you say I speak good? Yeah, correct. Which one? Serbian. Serbian? Yeah, really good. Oh, thank you. That's what I needed. Last season, the team was the champion and you were MVP. So how did you feel? It's been a long time ago. <laughs> That's how I feel. I felt great. I liked uh, 2021 because uh, uh, there is one interesting story with, with me and Shane. Summer before that, when it was Corona, we spoke on the phone. I remember exactly every detail of that conversation. We spoke and we said, like, because there was a conversation about <clears throat> also like rumors about the NBA that both of us will live. So we, we said, OK, let's make kind of deal with the team, FS, that we guarantee one out of three years you won championship. And then I said, okay, uh, let's do it. And then when I hang, hang, I up, uh -huh. hang up, I was like, what did I just say? I promised championship. <laughs> it's not easy. And then right next to that conversation, next season, we won everything. So it, it's a big relief for everyone here. Uh, also, when you, want, when you win one time, you definitely have, de have desire to win one more time because that feeling is really good. I mean, uh, to compete with that with the on the highest level mm -hmm. and uh, being consistent in achi making good achievements, it's not easy, but 
that's why pleasure is great. So for me, that experience will stay remarkable all my life and I'll try to, with the group of guys that we have here, to, to repeat this year too. We hope so, yes. I have questions about so that too. too. Um, another question about... This one is about... not promised. This one is just my <laughs> desire. We did one out of three. We did one out of three, so I don't need oh, any more funny. promises. Does this give you a little bit pressure though, like being an MVP last year? Do you feel like people expect a lot from you? Or do you give that pressure to yourself? They know me, I mean, uh, I really don't have any pressure. Mm -hmm. I don't care about this, what people say for many years already because it's nothing about me. I mean, they have rights to talk. They have rights to think about my game, whether they like or not. But I know what I do. Uh, I know there are so many ups and downs in each season. So nobody can predict anything. Really, it's impossible. And that's the beauty of the game. In the last three of our seasons, okay, except even Corona. Uh, in any final or any final four, nobody won who were the favorite. Favorite. So even before when I was with Jogiris, so that's something that gives me always confidence to stay calm, no matter what's the season going on, or how the season going on, or how my statistic is in, at the moment. I always try to do my best, and at the, at the end, I just hope for the best, and that's that's something that it's all about. I it's, that I care all about. So mm -hmm. for others, what they say, I really don't care. Yeah, I can see like you're relaxed about it. You don't put pressure on yourself. Well, Maybe it looks like that, but I live like that. That's the most important. No, I think it's good at this part. Like, you don't get stuck with the mistakes or whatever. Like, shake it off is the motto, kind of. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Shane, what about the tattoos? Do they have meanings? Yeah. Um, all of my tattoos have uh, some type of meaning to me or my life or the way that I like to live. So. Can you share a couple of them with us? Like, um, stories, if, you, if it's not too personal. Yeah. My sister drew this tattoo. Uh, when I was 16 or 17 years old, she drew it. Um, my mom showed me a, a Bible verse that I really liked, and I asked my sister to kind of draw some something that kind of resembled what that Bible verse meant. Um, so she drew this. That's on my arm. So that has a special meaning because it's her artwork that I put on my body. Um, I have a chest tattoo that I share with my sisters. Uh, we all have the same kind of scripture. Um, I have Jesus on my back. I grew up uh, pretty religious in the church every Sunday. Um, and that's my mom's very religious. She reads the Bible over and over. Um, and that kind of gave me a, a structure or a belief of how I should live my life or the principles that I have growing up and who I try to be on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and this one was the latest one that I got. It's kind of like a tribute to my hometown and my family. This is the skyline of my hometown. Um, this is the ring of uh, my father. They won the championship. He played baseball, so they won the championship in uh, 1990. So this is his championship ring. This is my father. Um, you played base baseball first, yeah, before basketball? Uh, okay. Just a little bit. I, I didn't really enjoy it, so okay. <laughs> I didn't really. It was just was, it was boring, in my opinion, so. Uh, when yeah. I was in college, I know you were in Miami, too. Yeah. I was in Florida also. Mm -hmm. Uh, in CAA. I was going to ask you the question of how was the college, college basketball and being an athlete in the U.S. actually? Um, I think college is an unbelievable experience. Um, I was only there two years. I left early, but uh, unbelievable experience. Uh, you leave the house at uh, 17 years old. You go to college, you're living by yourself. Um, it's kind of just a you have to grow up and all those things that maybe your family helped take care of when you lived at home you don't have that same support anymore. It's from a distance, so you have to kind of figure things out on your own. You have different responsibilities, and it's just like a, a way to grow up. But um, it also depends on what city you're in. I, I was in Miami. I, mean, I think that's, that's the best <laughs> I was in Miami, so uh, definitely was a, a fun a fun place to be that as a was young. Also a fun college, I would say. Yeah, definitely a fun <laughs> college. 18 years old in Miami. It was, it was a good time. Would you do it again if like uh, if you had a chance again? I mean, get back age. to 18, no, get back to 18 years old again. Would you do it again? Nah, I think, no. you know, I lived it. I enjoyed it for what it was. I had the good, the good parts and the bad parts of it. Um, but I think that part of my life, I'm happy with how it happened. So I wouldn't want to go relive that. I'm more focused on what's going to happen here in the future. Bubush, I heard you had a lot of mimics. Can you show us some gestures and the mimics, whatever you do? 
I didn't know. Like, <laughs> I, I have no clue. Maybe I do it naturally. I don't know. I, I don't do it in purpose. Like, I Did don't they know. make fun of it? He's smiling here again. So <laughs> every question I Everybody, ask you, every you every laugh. time I do something, they're laughing. So I don't know. Maybe <laughs> I'm funny. Who knows? I don't know. Maybe you're what? Maybe I'm funny. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> I'm a funny guy. Maybe. <laughs> Okay, you blocked me a couple times over at the game and... That's his type of humor, you know. <laughs> that is how he jokes. Exactly. Alright, another question then. Um, in one of the practices, you had like 117 threes in a row. How did that happen? I, I was passing the know. ball. <laughs> you were passing the ball? Yeah, 117 assists. Great assist. Uh, great passing, for sure. I agree. That's how it happened. No, I really don't know, because... Um, Clearly, it doesn't happen every day. Uh, I was playing a game with Shane like we usually do, and uh, we, we were tied on the first post, on the, on the first uh, spot. So how we usually do it, like the first one who miss, and that day I couldn't really miss. I made 117. So yeah, I'm just glad there were a camera because nobody would have believed me. That's it. <laughs> That's funny. Still, we don't believe. <laughs> All right, Vasa, you have a role on the court as a problem solver. What? <laughs> you, on the court, you have a role of a problem solver, like you're a problem solver on the court. Uh -huh. Okay, so why, how are you making the decisions in the critical moments? What are you thinking? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing, you just I like move? the way we play that, that crucial moment, because we, we, we really have a lot of guys that uh, can break the game. For example, two, two weeks ago we had a Fenerbahce at home. I, I started well the game and then he played well and then suddenly out of nowhere Babush came out <laughs> and he really played well. So he broke the game. I never chase these kind of situations in the game. I just feel that we, me and Shane especially, have that natural feeling who is taking over the game. Because sometimes you, even you have desire, sometimes you are tired, but then you feel confident that the next, the guy next to you, can do the same. Then next to that guy, we have one other guy who is capable of doing that, like Runo him. So that's something that I would describe the best. But in generally, I always grew up like to be that kind of guy that can break the game or that can be that they, they can make something big. I never run away from that. So maybe I build that through my early age, okay. I would say that too. Most likely. Um, I want to learn about your rituals in a game day or before a game day, like 24 hours before. What do you do? Is there any specific things? Go bedtime, food, We have some stuff. as a team daily routine that we have to do it. Like we have in the morning practice mm -hmm. as a team, like shoot around. Then we have to, we go to hotel over there. We have a lunch, nap time. Then we have a snack. But in generally, uh, I really try not to be superstitious. Hmm, okay. It really it really bothers me and when I was young I had so many like Can you give an example? Yeah, I had like three pairs of socks always left first then um, then I had like a, one pair of tights, second pair of tights, then third one is the cover with the the three actually was my favorite number that's why I made oh, okay. everything around three so but Sometimes I forget something and then I cannot play because if I don't have it, I was so under the stress. Oh, you were thinking that, oh my God, so yeah, today is not my Yeah, I was really, day. really superstitious because uh, why I started doing that in skiing, because you are, it's individual sports, you gotta fight with yourself and each skier has his own routines. Really, it's important. You cannot imagine how many things guys are having. Starting from warm up, you, when you go on the start, you are alone, you have to repeat the race and it's hard and you have to build that kind of uh, rituals that make easier things but in general it's, it, it bothers me honestly because everything is so spontaneous in life and I want to be just ready for the game. So uh, one thing that I always do the same it's my warm-up routine like mm, the okay. stuff that I do before the game it's just because of my body I have to get it ready because mm -hmm. I had early age injuries so I have to do it because of that but beside that I don't have it. Since you mentioned skiing your sister is also Olympic yeah, yeah, yeah, she snowboard, is? In snowboard, uh, Olympic yeah. snowboarder, and she's the first one to represent Serbia. Yeah, she? yeah, yeah, but we are not famous countries, as uh, ski uh, athletes, but she really was unique talent because we grew up in mountain, 
Unfortunately, she couldn't reach her highest goals because we didn't have financial support from from the country, and it's very expensive uh, a sport. sport. But yeah. in youth category, she was really, really successful. Okay. Why did you stop skiing? You started with her, like I'm younger. The same time? I'm younger. One of the reason was actually financial problem mm -hmm. because we, my father couldn't support both of us. She was way success, way more successful than me. She was like four times world champion in youth categories, oh, wow. second in youth Olympic games. I was just champion of my country, it wasn't <laughs> enough. We had to sell everything to, to, to, to have money for that sport. So I moved to the basketball spontaneously and it and went look well. where I am. <laughs> yeah, now I'm the supporter of her. <laughs> Congrats on that though, that's, yeah. a, that's a very good sport, I believe. I don't do skiing, but it yeah, should be. <laughs> my favorite, my favorite, definitely. I'm a bit scared to in get injured, no, you know? No, no, it's just, if you do it, just like for as amateur, it's beautiful. I wish everybody try. Really, people are scared because of stories, but it's it's not. I mean, if you do professionally, that it's really dangerous. But as a matcher, did it's you guys skate? You just have to learn the you have to learn the technique correctly, and then after that, it's a, it's more about whole enjoyment, like nature, like snow. you're a nature lover. I can yeah, see that. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I grew up in the mountain. Yes, until my nine years old. Well, that's good. How do you see, Shane, the difference between the games you play WOW and then the, the games that are a little bit sl uh, slower than usual? Um, I just think I go out there and try to play the right way every single time. If I'm going, then I'll go, I'll shoot, I'll be aggressive, I'll shoot my shots, and sometimes it goes well. And if other days, if I'm not making shots, I just try to play defense, get my teammates involved, and just be aggressive where I need to be aggressive. Uh, I don't force anything. You know, I always let the game come to me. And um, I know people always want to see me score, shoot a bunch of threes, step backs, doing all this, but that's never really been my game. It's just always playing the right way. And whatever the defense gives me, I take. I guess that's why you can see some games, it's a lot of points or a lot of things, and some games it's not as much. But, um, you know, I would say we've had a lot of success here with the way that we all play. We play together. We all understand each other. So at the end of the day, we all put the team success above individual goals. And um, as long as we win and we're successful year in and year out, that's all that matters, so. I want to learn about your motivation here. Like uh, before the games, you know, I'm also doing with our crew uh, on the LFS studio. And then we are sometimes uh, connecting with our fans and there are so many activities that we're doing with them off the court. Uh, so they're getting motivated to the game, actually. What is your motivation for the game? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm a competitor. I like to win. Um, you know, we've reached the mountaintop. Um, we've been champions in Turkish League, we've won everything we could possibly win here in the last four years and obviously getting that Euro League championship last year was the last thing that we really needed. Um, so I think, you know, just trying to chase that same feeling, like Vasa said earlier, that feeling of, you know, accomplishing the ultimate goal with the group of guys that you've been with for so long. Um, and that feeling that we had in the locker room, going back to the hotel, coming back to Istanbul having the fans meet us at the airport. I just think that that feeling that we had is kind of the motivation day in and day out to try to, you know, replicate that and become champions and, you know, do something that's never been done here. Um, we've broken, you know, many of those records or many of those things since we've been here for the last four years. And I think, you know, just striving for excellence and trying to be the best we can be on a day-to-day -day basis is, is kind of the motivation day in and day out for, for me and for the whole team. But Bush, when you get the ball, like, do you feel like you're going to make it or not? Like, do you get that feeling? Yes. That's a different question, I know, but sometimes, you know, whatever I do, it's not going to happen. No, you have to have the confidence that you're going to make it. Exactly. But I'm aware that, yes, sometimes I'm going to miss, but every time I'm taking a shot, I believe I'm going to make it. Yeah. Does that question hit you? Oh my God, I missed the previous one. Am I going to make this one? Or you just don't think about them? Maybe. It had happened, yes, but the goal is uh, with experience, you understand that, listen, uh, you're going to miss regardless, so just try to be ready for the next one and you have to, like you say, you have to let it go and just be ready for the next one. Focus on the next one, exactly. Now, this, this season, Coach Ataman has given you the role of defending the most uh, <laughs> important, why are you laughing, <laughs> in the opponent team, okay, tell me how you feel about it. <laughs> no, I'm just trying to do my best. I, Everybody knows that I'm not known as a defender. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes I'm using my length uh, 
and I'm sometimes successful. But clearly, I know I'm not the best defender, but I'm just trying to do my best to help the team. <laughs> Any Turkish words that you guys know? You can start maybe, and then we keep going. Görüşürüz. <laughs> Görüşürüz. This is my favorite because I hear every day a million times because of our assistant coach, Tomislav. He's saying Görüşürüz to everybody in the gym. <laughs> from the parking place <laughs> over there in Bakırköy, uh, my area, <laughs> Yashigur, so that's why I know. What is your favorite word? Favorite word? I mean, I'm saying favorite, but you can say whatever, actually. I don't know what my favorite word could be or any word. Kolagasin probably Kolagasin. is my, my go-to, yeah. What's yours, Bobos? It's the one I'm using the most, Nasasin. Nasasin? Well, Nasasin, Kolay Gelsin, Görüş is just so co corporate words. <laughs> <laughs> there should be some other daily words, come on. Çok güzel, çok güzel is great. Kardeş, çok güzel. Come on, there should be other stuff. When you order food, what do you guys say? Bir tane döner. Döner. Oh, well, since you mentioned the food, döner, any favorite Turkish dish? I mean, for you too, you said just döner. Baklava, for sure. No, no, no. I yeah, forgot the name around. of that thing. I forgot the name. Um, Describe, we'll find. It's like some kind of Rice pudding? pasta with like meat inside. Monty. Oh. Monty, Monty. Ah, okay. Would you like That's it? That's a good one. Monty is good. Monty Döner, Eskender? But from Bursa. From Bursa? From my ex place. There you go, you know everything now. Any desserts? You said baklava, but no, like no, no. other than that. My favorite is Tatler. No, Tatlı is dessert. No, Tatlı, uh, Katler, Katler, Katler. Katmer. Katmer, Katmer. Oh, ah, you ate it. it. One, I was just going to say that, definitely in Antep. Katmer is uh, great. Did you eat it hot? Because no, you're supposed hot, to eat it hot. Yeah, yeah, hot, hot. Anything else you guys thinking? Funny words? Turkish? Funny words. Or some vacation places in Turkey. Where did you guys go? We only went to, together as a team in Fethiye. Okay. Beautiful. Yeah, Fethiye is very beautiful. You did go. No, I didn't go there yet. Oh. I think I had, yeah. You were not here, it was like first round, the second round, when Kruno scored 40 yeah. something. Anything you want to add or I should just move on my next question? Okay. Vasa, there you go. In a fast break, you're going to pick, pick one of them. So these questions are you going to just pick each other. In fast break offense, Larkin and Bobush are both there and open. Who would you pass? He's really good at transition. He's really good at transition. There you go, another Turkish word we heard from you. <laughs> Larkin, let's say you drive into the paint and help defense comes. Who would you choose? It depends. You gotta make a decision right now. Who made the last shot? Pick who did. Create the scenario. <laughs> nah, I'll probably have to yeah. He's a spot shooter. You took his... You, <laughs> He's you impressed. Took, you took his best trend. As a anything else? Anything else? <laughs> He's not even in conversation. <laughs> now you're gonna make a decision. They both pick you. Um, let's say you're on a fast break offense attacking uh, the rim. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm sure you won't miss it. But let's say you missed it. Who would you like to get the rebound in the last three seconds of the game? From from me and Shane. Uh huh. I'm not there yeah. for sure. I mean, <laughs> so that's the question you have to... <laughs> I'm in the locker room. <laughs> Offensive we want to. Um, I just go with logic. He's, he's taller, so I guess it's more logic that he's going to get the ball. Now you're picked. What Trust me, I'm the worst rebounder <laughs> in the history of Europe. <laughs> Even I try, there is always somebody taking this ball. Well, it was very good to have a... I like this talk with you guys. I hope you all enjoyed it too. Is, is there anything yeah. you guys want to share to our fans? I just want to share that there is our assistant coach who will say probably Gorushurus. Let me just see. <laughs> Tomislav, Gorushurus. Teşekkürler, kolay gelsin, Gorushurus. All the words are used. Bravo. <laughs> Bugün çok keyifli bir sohbet gerçekleştirdiğimizi düşünüyorum. Zaten sizlere sürprizlerimiz olduğundan bahsetmiştik. İleriki zamanlarda da böyle güzel içerikleri sizlerle paylaşacağımızı düşünüyoruz. Anadolu Efe Stüdyo kanalını takip etmeyi unutmayın. Ve yeni içeriklerden haberdar olmak için bildirimleri açmanızı sizlere tavsiye ediyoruz. Görüşmek üzere. Abonez-vous Anadolu Efe Stüdyo pour voir plus de videos.